section 17.7, we'll look at criteria for aromaticity. The first one being that the molecule must be cyclic. Each p orbital in the molecule must overlap with p orbitals on two adjacent atoms for the molecule to be aromatic. So we'll take a look at 135 hexatriene that is not cyclic. And if you look at the ends, you'll see here's a p orbital that only has overlap on one side. And on the other side, there's another p orbital that only has overlap on one side. So this cannot be aromatic. The second thing is that the ring system must be planar. And the reason that it must be planar is so that the p orbitals have overlap and interact with each other. So for the electron density to be delocalized, they must be parallel. The third rule for aromaticity is that the ring must be completely conjugated, which means that you have to have a p orbital at every position. An example in cyclohexadiene, there are two carbons that are sp3 hybridized, so they don't have a p orbital, and because of that, the molecule cannot be aromatic. And the fourth rule is that the molecule must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons in conjugation. And this is sometimes called Huckel's rule. So examples would be like 2, 6, 10, 14 electrons. Those are all aromatic. Now, if the molecule has 4n instead of 4n plus 2 pi electrons, then it's going to be highly unstable. And these are called anti-aromatic, things with 4, 8, 12 electrons. There are three ways we can categorize cyclic compounds as far as aromaticity goes. First, they can be aromatic, and to be aromatic they need to be planar, cyclic, conjugated, and have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. They can be anti-aromatic, which are planar, cyclic, conjugated, and now have 4n pi electrons. Or they can be non-aromatic, and to be non-aromatic they need to lack any one of the criteria for aromaticity. Let's look at some examples. Uh, naphthalene, here we have a, a fully conjugated ring system. It is flat, and then we should count up the pi electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There are 10 pi electrons. So since 10 falls into 4n plus 2, then this is going to be aromatic. We can do the same thing with anthracene. Again, fully conjugated ring system. Every one of the carbons in here is sp2 hybridized with a p orbital. And we have to count the electrons again. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I have 14 pi electrons. Again, that fits into 4n plus 2, so this will be aromatic. If I look at cyclooctatetraene, now I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 pi electrons. So you would expect this to be anti aromatic. And if we look at cyclohexadiene, we'll see there are two carbon atoms in there that are sp3 hybrids that don't have p orbitals. So it's not fully conjugated, so this would be non-aromatic. So things get a little bit more complex once we add heteroatoms into the picture because a lot of heteroatoms have lone pairs. So now that we have lone pairs, we have to try to figure out what kind of an orbital those lone pairs are in to try to determine how many electrons we have in the ring and where those electrons are. So I'm going to tip my pyridine on the side and take a look at the p orbitals. And for the three pi bonds, I have to have six p orbitals already. So now I've got another orbital on this nitrogen that's got the lone pair. It can't be in that p orbital because I'm already using that p orbital. So if I look at the total number of bonds that I have, there are three bonds to a nitrogen, three bonds and one p orbital. So if there are three bonds, then it should be sp2 hybrids. So the lone pair of electrons should be in an sp2 hybrid orbital at a 120 degree angle coming out from the rest of the molecule.
What about in parole? In parole, there are two pi bonds inside the molecule, and now we've got a lone pair on nitrogen, and we have to try to figure out where they are. And there are really two possibilities. In the first possibility, the lone pair and the hydrogen are both in sp3 hybrid orbitals. So this whole thing is sp3 hybridized. Every one of the orbitals around nitrogen is sp3. If we have that, then this molecule is not conjugated fully. And if it's not fully conjugated, then it's going to be non-aromatic. The other possibility is that the lone pair of electrons are here in a p orbital. with sp2 hybrids, making all the rest of the bonds to nitrogen. If we have that, now this system is conjugated all the way around. And if you count the electrons at each place, you'd find out that we'd have six pi electrons. And with six pi electrons fully conjugated, this would be aromatic. So now there's a choice to be made. The molecule can either become non-aromatic or it can become aromatic. But well, we've already established that aromatic things are much lower energy. The lone pair of electrons on nitrogen in parole is in a p orbital because that makes the molecule aromatic. Let's look at a similar molecule called furan that has two lone pairs now. We have to now decide where each of those lone pairs are. The decision process is the same, where you would look at what orbitals there are already. And so now I've got two lone pairs out here that have to be in some kind of an orbital. So we could have them both in sp3. Again, the system would be not fully conjugated, which would lead to non-aromatic. The other option is that one of the orbitals is an sp2 hybrid. Well, one of them is in a p orbital. With a p orbital now, again, it would be fully conjugated. I've got six pi electrons fully conjugated, and this would again be aromatic. 